I've run into an issue with this game that I did not expect would be a thing, and that is, there is nothing to do. What's even more crazy is that the entire problem is self-inflicted, as the game limits you from doing any and everything, and to explain this, I'll start with the gacha. It takes 4 days to get a single pole playing this game, once you have exhausted all one-time resources. And based on the information I've gathered, you will be able to get about 50 pulls give or take each month, when you include events and what's not. Now given the standard pity rate is set at 200, it will take you almost 4 months to save enough for pity. Leaving you in a state of always being broke or always saving for the next character you know you want thanks to the benefit of global being behind the other servers, i.e. you won't be using the gacha very often. Now the slow pull income wouldn't be much of a bother if the game gave you other stuff to do, but the restrictiveness of the gacha permeates through almost every other part of the game. Let's move on to stamina. Now you need stamina to do all except a couple of the game modes at the time of recording. And the modes that don't require stamina are 1. Finite, 2. Boring, and 3. Not super meaningful in the grand scheme of things. So we are back to needing stamina, which by days 3 to 5 you'll end up waiting on to recharge hence not being able to play the game. Now you can buy stamina with your pull currency, but then you put yourself in a predicament. Try to get a new character, or play the game for 5 extra minutes per recharge. And without stamina, all that is left to do in this game is look at pretty PNGs. Now another area the game is very restrictive in is experimentation, and it does this twofold. First, the game punishes you for trying characters. To upgrade a character that is above 3 star rarity to usefulness takes a lot of resources that are slow to come by, and the problem is that by design, if you invested in the wrong character, your end game progress could be halted for weeks at a time if you are unlucky. Normally in most games I play, you can ignore the meta by just over leveling semi decent characters and just brute force your way through, but in R3 gear, you generally need very specific characters or the end game hunts become nearly impossible or at best, a coin flip to win. Characters of the same rarity aren't even designed with any kind of equality in mind. So some 4 star units are better than a lot of 5 star units, not to mention other 4 stars. Now usually this is seen as a good thing, but in my eyes it just adds further restrictions on who I can play with, as this isn't an action game where I can learn to play better and overcome said challenges. If you need an example of the imbalance, let's look at Morris vs Diange. Both 4 star healers, except Morris's main heal skill is 10% stronger with 2 turns less cooldown, and it removes all debuffs which is guaranteed. Dianch, on the other hand, not only has a worse heal, her added effect is 1 to 2 random buffs for teammates, which is something you can't plan around, and it only gets worse when you compare the other skills. Why design a game with so many characters and make a lot of them obsolete? I understand that characters will overlap, but at the very least, there should be more balance between the same rarity. Making my choice come down to which design I like more, or do I need a specific but useful niche field? The other major restriction this game has on experimenting is the gear system. If you can farm the correct gear in the first instance, upgrading to usability is crazy hard to do, as the two resources needed, gold and upgrade chips, are extremely hard to come by. And I'll even say that the game lures you into a false sense of security with this in the beginning, giving you a nice amount of upgrade chips and forcing you to use them to complete some missions. And after you are done with that, you realize that you barely get any upgrade chips and you are stuck waiting a long time just to upgrade one of the 6 pieces. This entire system gets even more infuriating, because given that the upgrades are so costly, you can't even experiment with lower rarity gear to try builds, and then upgrade to higher rarity ones later, because investing in lower rarity pieces is basically a death sentence. When you compare all of these issues together, you get a game with not much to look forward to in the short and medium term, and not enough engaging gameplay to keep you hooked either. In summary, acquiring new characters is slow, Trying out new characters or gear builds is almost akin to ruining your account, and even the main end game loot which is supposed to be gear farming is highly restricted by how much stamina you are willing to buy. Now I am not naive, I know that all of these systems are designed specifically to make people spend money on the game, which I'm pretty sure works at the beginning of the game, but it doesn't feel designed to keep people playing long term. And with games like Honkai Star Rail on the horizon, games like Archery Gear should be positioning themselves better when it comes to their player base. I like this game, but I hardly get to play the game and that is not because I don't want to play, but because there is very little to do from day to day. I can hope for improvements in the future, but I've heard that the other servers are operating in this same manner, so I don't know how long you will be around in this game. Anyways, until next time. My name is Kujets and you can look forward to gacha gaming discussions on the games I'm currently playing.